You're watching Machindo's hometown station, HTV One. Hello everyone, it's Brett Boyd from the Market House where we have adjusted our hours to serve the community and keep our community and our associates safe. So now Market House is available to you from nine until six every single day, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. with an exclusive shopping hour for seniors from nine to 10. And don't forget our tech shopping service as well, 517-234-2020, Market House is here for you. Tired of having everyone know you're coming before you arrive because of your exhaust? If so, then it's time to call the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. RS Custom Exhaust has all the tools and parts to make your vehicle quiet again. And for you sports car enthusiasts, if you're looking for the roar to be the king of the roads, RS Custom Exhaust can help you too. With free estimates and first class service, RS Custom Exhaust has your vehicle covered. So stop and see them today, located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. From Machindo's News Leader, this is HTV One News at Noon. The spike has officially begun in Williams County and the Lakeland Correctional Facility is dealing with a much larger outbreak than previously thought. Well, good afternoon, Machindo. I'm Scott Pienta. We start in Ohio where the latest county in the Machendo area to have any confirmed cases has now surpassed its neighborhood its neighbors south of the state line. As of yesterday afternoon, Williams County is now reporting 21 confirmed cases and one death with an additional two probable cases. That's up from 15 confirmed cases on Wednesday and just eight cases on Tuesday's count. Now it's not clear at this time if the jump in numbers is a result of an outbreak or simply additional testing. Now to the east, Fulton County is relatively steady at 17 confirmed cases and one probable case with no deaths. Steuben County confirms 18 positives and one death. North of the state line, 44 Branch County residents have tested positive and two have died. According to the WTVB, a ninth inmate has died at the Lakeland Correctional Facility. 393 prisoners have tested positive at the facility out of 535 tested. 15 Lakeland inmates are currently in recovery. 31 staffers have also tested positive at that prison. The Michigan Department of Correction plans to test all prisoners by the end of the week. Hillsdale County still tops the area's residential list with 99 positive cases and 13 deaths. Lenawee County reports 79 confirmed positive, 29 recovering and no deaths. And now they also show 12 probable cases and five recoveries in that category. Just in this past hour, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer has announced that she will extend the state's stay-at-home order until May 15th. The new extension now requires people to wear face coverings when inside enclosed public spaces, such as grocery stores or small shops. And employers will be required to provide cloth face coverings to their employees. Now, face coverings will not be required while outdoors. And speaking of the outdoors, the new extension also eases recreation restrictions. Motorboats and golf will be allowed, though golf carts will be banned for the duration of the order due to social distancing rules. It was expected an extension allows some sectors of the economy to get back to work, including landscapers, lawn care services, and nurseries, all subject to social distancing rules. Retailers that do not sell necessary supplies can now reopen for curbside pickup and delivery. And big box stores can now reopen their previously closed off areas, including gardening, gardening centers. Bike repair is also, and bike repair and maintenance is also allowed to continue. People are permitted to travel between each other's residences, though health officials still strongly discourage those visits as the pandemic continues. In a release issued prior to this morning's press conference, Whitmer said the data shows Michiganders are doing their part by staying home and staying safe. She says that's a good thing, but we must keep it up as social distancing is our best weapon against this enemy. Whitmer added that while she's lifting some restrictions, she wants to make it crystal clear that we should all stay at home and stay safe as much as possible. The crisis has forced the Branch Hillsdale St. Joseph Community Health Agency to lay off seven staff members. 
WTBB reports that the staffers were notified two weeks ago as a result of Michigan's emergency restrictions. Three hearings and vision technicians were laid off due to the closure of schools across the state and four sanita sanitarians from the Environmental Health Division were laid off due to the res restaurant closures preventing health inspections. However, two of those sanitarians have been hired back due to increased activity. Health Officer Rebecca Burns told the agency board yesterday that the agency employees are working in two separate teams that alternate days at the office. Well, there will be a 2020 graduation in Angola. The Herald Republican says AHS Public Principal Travis Heaven, uh, Haven confirmed that, decisions, uh, confirmed that decision with the MSD Stooping Board at their Zoom meeting Tuesday night. Now, and how and when the ceremony will take place, however, has not yet been determined. The date is currently scheduled for June 7th at 2 p.m. in the Angola High School gym, but the paper notes that the ceremony usually fills the gym to capacity, with people standing outside the doors and peering in over shoulders just to get a glimpse of what is going on inside. Indiana's current stay-at-home order is scheduled to expire on May 1st, but Governor Eric Holcomb has said it could be extended if necessary. Ideas mentioned the school board meeting, including holding the event virtually, holding it outdoors, or limiting attendance for parents who are properly spaced throughout the gym according to social distancing rules. One notable change has already taken place. Heaven says that students can order purple face masks with the year 2020 printed on them, along with their caps and gowns. Meanwhile, school officials in Strykel are taking a more moderate tone, saying that they are hopeful that they can hold a graduation ceremony for their seniors in May. According to the Village Reporter, the Stryker School Board held a socially distancing meeting in their brand new auditorium, as you can see here. Now, the board members were clearly more than six feet apart across the performance size stage, and all members had to speak up to be heard at the meeting. Now, Stryker graduation ceremony was originally set for May 17th, but all events on the district's calendar were canceled when Gov Mike, Governor Mike DeWine ended the remainder of the academic year. Superintendent Nate Johnson said that they are still holding the 17th as a possibility, and the picture will become more clear as that date approaches. As well as with Angola, it's unclear what that ceremony will look like and how or where it would be held. The state is official, the date is official. Hillsdale College will be holding their commencement on July 18th. College President Larry Arn originally announced that as a tentative date for the school's graduation in the campus-wide email that detailed the end of the academic year's in-person classes due to the coronavirus pandemic. Well, now the update from the college says the senior class has been surveyed and about 80% of them are able to make it back to Hillsdale for commencement. Celebrations and activities are set to begin on July 16th and the tra a travel stipend is being offered to each graduating senior. More details are expected as the event approaches. Meanwhile, Tryon University is expecting to get back to normal or as close to it as possible by August. WLKI and the Herald Republicans say that the long as the federal, state, and local guidelines allow for it, the university plans to continue in-person classes and welcome students back to campus for all the fall semester. A couple of op uh, options are possible. President Earl Brooks said that classes could be held in traditional classrooms as usual, or there could be a hybrid class with some students meeting in person and others joining in online. The school is also improving ways to keep the campus sanitized and they're working with Cameron Memorial Hospital and, to, uh, and other organizations to develop health protocols. Good news from the Fremont School District as the Herald Republican reports that Fremont Middle School Principal Greg Moeller is recovering from his bout with the coronavirus and was present at the school board's Zoom meeting on Monday night. Moeller has skipped a meeting five weeks ago, telling the paper that he had sat outside the building that night feeling ill and knowing that he shouldn't be there. After he called Superintendent Bill Stitt, he went into self-isolation at his home in Allen County and stayed there until things got worse a week later. That's when Moeller went to the emergency room at Parkview Hospital in Fort Wayne and tested positive 
for COVID-19. And he is on the mend now, though not fully recovered. He says his breathing is still problematic and he has to undergo therapy with regular exercises to build his lungs back up to full capacity. He also is in a weakened physical state with the loss of 35 pounds. But aside from the occasional cough, the paper says he appeared to be the vintage Greg Moeller during the online meeting. Prior to the meeting's official start, the principal shared his thoughts and details about the illness and expressed his love and thanks to the community and their support, especially noting a video made for him by his students, who he called amazing kids and amazing people. Moeller said that he's been told that recovery could take up to a year, but he insists that he'll be back to full health in June. While the pandemic continues, things are going to get at least somewhat back to normal in Stryker. The Bryan Times says that the village has decided to bring back its full staff next week. While well, starting on Monday, Mayor Joey Beck says employees under Village Administrator Alan Regseckler will return to work with social distancing rules in place. Now, Beck says that that's not a problem because the employees are usually working outside the office to begin with and they are practical precautions while they are at the office as well. Reg Sacker is told that the council told the council down the online meeting that Monday that the village is a bit behind on regular services and operations, including brush pickup and landscaping. Fiscal Officer Beth Redling, uh, uh, Redlinger told the paper that activity is picking up in her office as well, with taxes and utility bills starting to pile up. Also of note, Police Chief Stephen Schlossler told that, that the, while the ga local, large gatherings and par uh, parties at homes are still not allowed under the Ohio State at Home order, his department is not in charge of handling those situations. He says that the police can call the health department, health department with those cases, but residents can call the health department themselves about possible violations. Michigan Secretary of uh, State Jocelyn Benson has announced that her department will temporarily lay off 60% of its staff as of Sunday. A press release from MDOS says that the layoffs are expected to last for two weeks, but could be extended. Citing that the coronavirus pandemic and the need to be responsible stewards of taxpayer funds, the department is laying off all staff who are not able to work full-time under the state's stay-at-home order. Now, most of them are staff members as Secretary of State branch offices, which are currently closed, and they will automatically be enrolled in the state's unemployment system. The layoffs will not impact the public services and many drivers and vehicle trans transactions can be conducted online and the self-service facilities in grocery stores across the state. The Bureau of Elections will remain open as elections are considered a critical infrastructure. And Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer has once again expanded unemployment eligibility due to the coronavirus pandemic. The new executive order issues, uh, issued on Wednesdays expands the state's work share program, offering more tools to employers in order to reduce layoffs. It also extends unemployment benefits to employees who recently accepted new employment but voluntarily left work or were unable to start their new position due to the crisis. Additionally, it allows anyone with an active unemployment claim to receive up to 26 weeks of benefits, suspends the requirement for a claimant to request a registration and work search waiver from their employer, and it allows UIA retirees to keep their retirement benefits if they return to work to process claims or serve on the Occupational Health and Safety Commission. Governor Whitmer said in a press release that no one should have to worry about how to make things, uh, how to make ends meet during the unprecedented public health crisis. It is in the third temporary expansion of the unemployment system in response to COVID-19, with the first two executive orders being issued in mid and late March. On the local front, Hillsdale Mayor Adam Stockford reached out to State Representative Eric Lohoyser about the unemployment process and posted the response on his Facebook page yesterday afternoon. A representative from Lohoyser's office says that this was uh, he was on a conference call with the UIA earlier that day to get an update. The agency is bringing in additional staff to assist with answering phones and processing payments. 
The Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity has set up a webpage specifically to help with the unemployment, and you can find that at michigan.gov slash LEO. Lloyd Heuser's office adds that, he's, that they're always happy to assist anyone who is having difficulty with the unemployment process. Michigan's Attorney General is calling on the FDA to end restrictions on blood donations from, a gay, from gay and bisexual men as well as transgender women. Now, currently the federal government requires people in those categories to abstain from sexual activity for three months before donating blood, a holdover from the previous limit of 12 months, which itself stemmed from an outright ban due to fears over the AIDS epidemic. Now, for decades, advocacy groups have called for the FDA to lift restrictions altogether, saying that they no longer have any real basis in medical fact and put an unnecessary limit on donations from people who would otherwise be eligible. According to the press release from the AG's office, data from the UCLA School of Law's Williams Institute shows that lifting those restrictions would produce more than 2 million additional eligible blood donors, donors for, and nearly 175 of those uh, them are likely to donate, adding nearly 300,000 pints of blood annually. Blood drives and donations have dropped off significantly amidst the coronavirus crisis, and the American Red Cross says that they, that they have less than five-day supply on hand, which is critical because the Red Cross provides about 40% of the nation, nation's blood and blood components. Now, Michigan Attorney Dana Nessel joined 19 other states' attorneys generals in submitting comments to the federal agency on that topic. Nessel says COVID-19 definitely does not consider one's sexual orientation prior to infecting them. Now, she's calling for a risk-based model more in line with laws that protect against discrimination, saying that the current population-based policy threatens, violates the 14th Amendment, Equal Protection Clause, as well as the Fifth Amendment. She says in a long term, the FDA should look for a risk at risk behavior rather than sex, adding that policy should be based on scientific evidence rather than an arbitrary timeline. Well, still to come, federal cha charges have been filed against a man who held a standoff with police in Fremont and the Branch County Prosecutor's race gets a surprise twist. Well, you're watching HTV One News at noon. The Saucy Dogs is the name and barbecue is the game. Come on down for a good time and some great food. At Saucy Dogs, try our barbecue nachos or our tasty ribs. We'll have you howling for more. Saucy Dogs, downtown Jonesville. Does your vehicle sound like a tractor putting down the road? Then you need to see the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. They will give you a free estimate along with first class customer service. They custom make any exhaust needed for your vehicle. Stop and see them today located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. Hello everyone, it's Brett Boyd from the Market House where we have adjusted our hours to serve the community and keep our community and our associates safe. So now Market House is available to you from 9 until 6 every single day, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. with an exclusive shopping hour for seniors from 9 to 10. And don't forget our tech shopping service as well, 517-234-2020, Market House is here for you. El Cerrito's variety packed menu has something for everyone. With generous servings and lots of flavor, you'll think of it as a fiesta for your taste buds. Dine in or carry out at El Cerrito on Chicago Street in downtown Coldwater and Carlton Road in Hillsdale. There's a reason the professionals shop at Jonesville Lumber. They expect quality, service, and knowledge. And that's exactly what they receive. For nearly 100 years, Jonesville Lumber has been family owned. We take pride in serving our area with great products at competitive prices. We have dedicated project estimators in-house that will help figure the materials needed to complete your next task at hand. Whether you're building your dream home, adding a pole barn, building a deck, updating your kitchen, or painting your front door, let Jonesville Lumber help you with your next project. The Saucy Dogs is the name and barbecue is the game. Come on down for a good time and some great food. At Saucy Dogs, try our barbecue nachos or our tasty ribs. We'll have you howling for more. Saucy Dogs, downtown Jonesville. Well, a small fire caused some minimal damage at the Holiday Inn Express in Lenawee County's Madison Township. 
The Daily Telegram says it happened around 9.30 Wednesday night. The fire is deemed accidental, and while there wasn't enough evidence to determine an exact cause, fire crews found flames and smoke outside the building around the laundry room's dryer vent. Madison Township Assistant Fire Chief Nick Wilson says firefighters were only there about 10 minutes before the blaze was put out, and Chief Ryan Rank says that the flames never made it their way inside the building. Some parts of the first floor were water damaged due to the fire sprinkler and going off in the laundry room. Guests reportedly were evacuated quickly and safely, and there were no injuries. Rank says a few rooms near the laundry room may not be inhabitable for the time being, but no guests were entirely disp displaced. The hotel waived charges for their guests Wednesday night, and those who wanted a checkout were not penalized. Waterloo, Indiana man... It, had accused of holding a standoff with police in Steuben County is now in federal custody. The Herald Republican says 38-year-old Joshua Kelly has been transferred to the Allen County Jail after being indicted on federal counts of possession with intent to distribute meth, possession of a firearm during a drug trafficking crime, and felon in possession of a firearm. Kelly has been in the Steuben County Jail since June 14th of 2018 after allegedly firing a gun at police officers when they responded to a tip of a dead girl being found in a bathroom at a hotel in Fremont. That turned into an hour-long standoff as police attempted to bring Kelly out of the room with pepper spray gas and a con a continued firing shots at them. Now... As a result of that incident, Kelly still faces numerous charges in Steuben County, including the 13 original charges and three newer felony meth charges that were brought against him this February. The federal charges stem from an incident that allegedly took place on March 7th of 2018, but no further details were made available. A pretrial conference at the federal case is scheduled for June 17th with a three-day three jury trial scheduled to begin on June 30th. Locally, Kelly is set for a June 9th pretrial conference in Steuben County Superior Court, which was rescheduled due to the detention in Allen County. His Steuben County jail jury is set for August 3rd through the 7th. Now, Kelly's criminal record includes meth-related convictions in DeKalb County and Noble Counties. Injuries that were discovered during a woman's hospital visit have resulted in criminal charges against an Angola man. The Herald Republican says 33-year-old Shane Robinson is facing felony charges of battery with a deadly weapon, intimidation with a deadly weapon, and domestic battery in the presence of a child. Robinson was arrested Wednesday after Angola police were notified of injuries to his alleged victim. The woman reportedly went to the hospital on Sunday complaining of, chest, of pain in her back and chest area. Police say that there are documented two cuts to the woman's neck, a scrape on her chest, and a cut on her left arm. Court documents say that Robinson and the woman allegedly got into an argument in the kitchen Saturday night when Robinson yelled at her, grabbed her arms, and pushed her to the ground. She hit her head back of her head on the floor before Robinson allegedly threatened her by holding a hunting knife to her neck and telling her he would do it. The police report says that the cuts on the woman's neck and arms were from that knife. Robinson was arraigned via video and is in the Steuben County Jail on $5,000 bond. If he posts the required 10%, well, he's been ordered not to have any contact with the alleged victim or the four-year-old child who allegedly witnessed the battery. Robinson, said, is, Robinson is set for a preliminary hearing on July 13th and a jury trial on August 27th. Well, if found guilty, he could spend up to six years in prison. It's a change of plans for Branch County Prosecutor Valerie White. As WTVB reports, the incumbent has announced that she will not run for the full term. Instead, she has endorsed Chief Assistant Prosecutor Zachary Stiefen in the August, in, in the, uh, August Republican primary. Now, Stemfen will reinforce former prosecutor Terry Norris in, the, well, well, excuse me, will face former prosecutor Terry Norris in that primary. White said she had originally planned to run this year, but between being a, re, a relative newcomer to Branch County and the challenges of both the job and running a campaign in the midst of a COVID-19 crisis, well, she's decided against it. 
White was appointed to the position early last year, and Ralph Kimball was forced to resign due to sexual harassment complaints made against him by female courthouse, courthouse employees. She appointed uh, Stempen as chief assistant prosecutor that March. Now, he is a cold water native and a graduate of Cooley Law School who also coaches local youth sports teams. In joining the race, he said he plans to be, bring a clear, passionate, and aggressive direction forward in the uh, Branch County's fight against crime. The Steuben County Republican Committee will be holding a caucus to replace William Harder as county coroner as Harder has taken the job as assistant fire chief with the Angola Fire Department. According to the Herald Republican, Harder says he resigned the coroner's position because he didn't want to burn the candle at both ends. Now, the last day as coroner is May 7th. <clears throat> he also plans to run for one of the three at-large seats in, at the Steuben County Council as one of the four candidates for the three slots on the Republican ticket. The Republican caucus to determine his replacement as coroner will take place on May 4th. Former coroner Rodney Snyder, who was term limited prior to Harder's election, is expected to be the lone Republican candidate in the caucus. In the regular election, the, he would face the Democratic primary winner, either Don Mason or Lauren Vogel. Harder says that if Snyder gets the job, he would likely stay on as a deputy coroner. I'd like Vice President Mike Pence says that the White House has issued authority to the governors to allow hospitals to start performing elective surgeries again at yesterday's White House briefing. And he went on to say it's up to the governors how they will proceed and, Whitmer and, and whether it's statewide or county by county. They will make that determination based on their state's data. The White House Earlier understands today, the importance of elective surgeries to, to the hospital's Carson, finances. Uh, now, the current stimulus clock. bill that was passed yesterday the includes a $310 billion dollars for a paycheck protection program White and $75 billion to Council. go to hospitals. Now, Vice President Pence stated that Governor Eric Holcomb of Indiana approved that elected clinical procedures can start back up on April 24th. Well, those are the today's top stories. We'll see you right back here tomorrow for HTV One News at noon. Don't forget, you can find more news in our live stream 24-7 at HTV1.net. For all of us here at HTV One, I'm Scott Pienta. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Have a great day. having everyone know you're coming before you arrive because of your exhaust? If so, then it's time to call the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. RS Custom Exhaust has all the tools and parts to make your vehicle quiet again. And for you sports car enthusiasts, if you're looking for the roar to be the king of the roads, RS Custom Exhaust can help you too. With free estimates and first class service, RS Custom Exhaust has your vehicle covered. So stop and see them today, located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. Hello everyone, it's Brett Boyd from the Market House where we have adjusted our hours to serve the community and keep our community and our associates safe. So now Market House is available to you from nine until six every single day, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. with an exclusive shopping hour for seniors from nine to 10. And don't forget our tech shopping service as well, 517-234-2020. Market House is here for you.